Hello, um, I'm Dr. Catherine Thomas, and I'm going to be talking to you today about emerging technology in the form of um, remotely piloted aircrafts, or RPAs, otherwise known as also uh, UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles. I'm also going to be talking about digital twin um, and quantum computing. Uh, the reason um, I've designed this talk is to talk about these uh, different emerging trends and what this might mean for archaeology. Because the 21st century is upon us and we are part of this next wave of digital transformation. But as members of the society that we're trying to observe, we are still quite unwittingly a part of the developments and have many blind spots. We are also not fully cognizant of the implications of this digital transformation around us. So this talk is designed to um, give a viewpoint and provide a viewpoint on these emerging technological trends and to discuss um, through purposive case studies what that might actually mean for archaeology, both in research and in cultural heritage management. So the developments in this talk will focus on key areas of innovation in data collection, data visualization, and data storage. RPAs, or remotely piloted aircraft, represent the new wave of data collection. Um, digital twin represent the next wave in data visualization and asset, asset maintenance. And quantum computing represents the next wave in data storage. Most of these areas fall under the category heading of big data and are, as Parker Van Valkenburg stated in his recent article, Big Archaeology, changing the way we approach and analyze data. Up to now, we've been recording, visualizing, and storing data in a very binary and prescriptive way. But as John Maynard Keynes said, or it is suggested that he said, um, when the events change, I change my mind. What do you do? When the facts change, I change my mind. What do you do? When the information changes, I alter my conclusions. What do you do? And when someone persuades me that I'm wrong, I change my mind. What do you do? So I'm here to try and see if I can convince you that the events, the facts, the way we collect, visualize and store information has changed. And, and because of this, we really need to change our minds about how we collect, visualize and store archeological information. RPAs are touted as the new direction in data collection for archaeological surveys. As a chief remote pilot, CASA certified, I'm of course excited and involved with this direction. Within archaeological research, most studies have focused on data enhancement capabilities of the RPAs to collect the data remotely. Applications driven by computer science include photogrammetry, laser scanning, enhanced point cloud modeling. On the other hand, applications driven by environmental sciences include vegetation signature modeling, um, the, the derived calculations of NDVI, FAPAR, and the various indices that can be assessed, be assessed remotely. On, on the other hand, applications driven by heritage management and construction include things like monitoring sites, live streaming, and real-time real access to archaeological sites. However, and this is the crux of it, Applications are far outstripping the thought development on how globalization is impacting on the local processes and the local decisions. So where is the issue? The, the new monumental structure um, discovered um, in, in Petra in, nearly four years ago by Sarah Parkak, uh, a National Geographic Research Fellow, and um, Christopher Tuttle, the Executive Director of the Council of American Overseas Research Center, was supposed to herald the start of a new phase of, in identification of sites via Google Earth and low-flying drones. And although this and other various applications are all very exciting, there should be deep concerns about what this means for a considered and thoughtful application of archaeology and archaeological survey. Where is the consent and collaboration of the local people, and where is the considered approach to survey? Where is the UAV guide to good practice? I'm trying to write this at the moment. And how does this help us record intangible values of traditional owners and communities? It really doesn't. Austin Hill in Anthropology News in 2013 um, provided a very quick think piece. Um, and, and in it, he highlighted the main areas of concern. There's a lack of privacy, lack of responsibility, and lack of consideration. Most current archaeological surveys with drones or UAVs are undertake, undertaken by archaeologists within the heritage management profession who are unlicensed by CASA, uncertified by CASA. The concerns are manifold. 
for the safety of both the cultural information and on a personal level, the safety of the bystanders. We have, um, without sort of soapboxing, we have an ethical, moral, and soon to be enforced by CASA, a legal requirement to ensure that these UAV surveys do not to continue to be conducted by unlicensed operators without a good guide to good practice or even the most rudimentary skills in social science. This is not the space for these unlicensed operators. UAV surveys without a framework for data collection is not appropriate culturally or scientifically. Um, and this non-consensual surveying without protocols is occurring and we will are sliding towards not having a proper conceptual framework for the use um, and collection of data with UAVs. And so this, is, this talk is just part of the think piece to try and sort of raise awareness for the real concern that um, the issues of lack of CASA accreditation for remote pilots, the lack of membership of archaeologists within the um, Special Sciences Institute, uh, the lack of a UAV guide to good practice, and the lack of consent with traditional owners um, really is a call. There really is a place here and a call for a working group to design the path ahead. The next area of development is within Digital Twin. Digital Twin is, for those of you who aren't aware, is the creation of a digital virtual copy and its connection, and the connectivity here is important, between the real and the virtual world through sensors. Data can then be simulated for a variety of assets, and modeling can be done in real time to alter said assets. And this is really crucial for monitoring. But what does it actually mean for archaeology? Um, things like the fire of, uh, and loss of um, Notre Dame in 2019 should be enough to be a catalyst for the importance of investing in digital twin, which we are unfortunately not doing it enough at the moment. Um, recent work in, at Peterborough Cathedral um, showed the importance again also of developing another digital copy of a physical asset. What are we actually doing here in Australia? Pilot activities going on. CSIRO's um, lab, Data61, the data and digital specialist arm of um, Australia's National Science Agency, announced this launch of its mixed reality lab in Melbourne in 2019. The purpose is to develop a digital twins for asset monitoring. And this is done by data capture via sensors and cameras, develop a 3D model of a real asset. The importance here for heritage studies um, means preventative heritage management of sites, improving risk assessments, and long-term monitoring. However, to find a true, purposive, really good example of a case study, we need to go overseas. The recent work of Joanne um, et al. on Digital Twin, the research framework to support conservation policies, shows the importance of linking Digital Twin to BIM, building information modeling. Um, and through their work um, out of Belgium, we should, they developed a framework, a research framework, for applying um, heritage management to uh, risk assessments and combining um, this area, this, combining these two areas to show the importance of constant monitoring of an asset um, and for things like Notre Dame, rebuilding lost assets for heritage management, the combination of these tools within building information modeling, which can be used alongside targeted RPA flights as it was done in, with Peterborough Cathedral in the slide before, um, this should be emerging as a more focal part of archaeological survey and practice. And in it, the accountability would be built into the archaeological practice with more monitoring and use of these tools. So this, you can see how the visualization within Digital Twin and the sudden linking of real time, real uh, in real time of an asset to its virtual copy would start building in the, the accountability, which is um, somewhat lacking in current RPA flights and UAV um, monitoring. Plus, um, projects like the um, heritage building information modeling that's done abroad, and um, this example here of St. Joseph's Church provided by Duratech are the beginnings of being able to combine those um, spatial geodatabases with asset management um, 
with the con with that with that um, ethical framework that is currently missing from the RPA surveys. So it's about building the, the new technologies into an existing framework to allow for a much more considered approach to what um, these new digital trends mean for the collection, uh, visualization, and um, long-term preservation of heritage information. The last area that I will talk upon about today is um, quantum computing. As practitioners of the stored past, uh, um, this is an area which is all be very exciting and excited about. Quantum computing allows for the increase of um, data storage to a point which is almost incomprehensible to the human mind and allows for uncertainty to be built into the model at, from a base level. What does it mean? The use of quantum particles known as qubits as opposed to actual bytes um, and bits for storage will allow for the storage of the non-binary. And this acceleration of processing, storage, and the cons concept of the superposition should be considered by the use and practice of archaeology. But as um, I watched a lovely TED talk about um, quantum computing by uh, quantum computing by Johnny Gross, and um, if you're confused by quantum computing, don't worry. That's the point at which you're getting it, um, and I and I feel that that is the case. But we, even though it is quite a non-accessible topic, doesn't mean we should be closing our minds to what this is for archaeology. Conceptually, quantum physics is already changing the way we consider radiocarbon dating, and as discussed it. Benninger et al.'s paper in 2015, um, the movement to these um, understanding non-binary states is really, really important. The impacts are much more far-reaching. Quantum theory picks, unpicks all of our current models from Shannon's um, quantifying archaeology and basic statistics to the very, base, very suggestion that there is a permanent state of, of an object or an archaeological site. And it is a, gives us a way for us to deal with the fluidity, increased information, and the concept of the intangible. So here we've got from, from start to finish, we've got um, different uh, emerging technologies that will give us the tools to be able to deal with this problem of excessive categorization and modeling within archaeology. The general takeaways from this talk um, is that non-binary information is the way forward. And we have the tools now um, to, do, to start investigating these processes um, and how we collect data, how we visualize data, and how we store data. And the three main areas of growth are um, developing a, a, an ethical and um, good practice guide for uh, UAVs or remotely piloted aircrafts, um, looking at the implications of asset management through digital twin and what this could mean for um, heritage, um, both from a preventative, preventative side of looking at risk management um, and issues surrounding um, maintaining buildings to the replication of lost heritage through uh, visualization of, um, of, a, of a, a augmented digital twin and also the area of quantum computing and um, the, the ability to now uh, store data in um, non-binary, non, um, non non-bit state um, and looking at, um, you know, we've, we've just, just this week we've um, had the first example of quantum computing um, replicating a um, chemical reaction. The work is out there, it's changing the face of um, the digital landscape and this should also then start um, changing the face of the archaeological landscape from a theory, um, theories, methods, and practice standpoint. Thank you for listening. Um, this was uh, Dr. Catherine Thomas.